Welcome back YouTube and fellow berserkers. Today I'm going to show you how I start up my blacksmith forge using my flint and steel strike. this neat little piece of antler here. Now you see this is kind of like triple XL which I like to have for the Viking camp. I start a lot of fires up here when it gets cold outside and I really need a lot of material and I don't want to run out. I usually don't take this anywhere but here so this is actually a really good size. I'm going to show you what I have in here and what I put in the standard size kit's only about a good handful. It'll probably fit about four regular fire starting kits in this bag here. So first of all, I have some dry grass. I carry a big lump of tree sap from pine trees. This is an excellent fire starter. It smells really nice too. It uh, burns extremely well. It's uh, when you have a fire that you want to maintain in wet weather conditions, this is a good catalyst to use. Tree sap, I collect it up and I just throw it in here. Usually it balls up like Play-Doh, really nice. You can just pat it together, throw it in here. It gets sticky at first, but it collects up a lot of dust, so it doesn't, it starts to kind of knead together. So I have birch bark. This has so many uses. You can use this in so many different ways. Once you get your charred cloth piece to actually glow, uh, glow, you can roll it up in here with some grass and make like a, a little torch. So this will actually start to burn up here. And you can set this like this down and it'll actually, you can actually use this to, this burns very long, almost like a candle. So you can actually use this to start several fires and then this will burn down. There's oils in this. You can actually take your knife and scrape off some of this white birch bark into a powder and makes an excellent ignition source as well if you're using a ferro rod which I uh, had in previous videos. I, that's how I used to start my fire until I got my blacksmith forge up and running so I could actually use my flint steel. I have some charred cloth all wrapped up in my leather leather pouch here. For a demonstration today though, we're going to use some of this I have here. I don't like to open this if I don't have to. I have some fat wood pieces here. Quite a few pieces of fat wood. Now for those of you that don't know, which probably very few of you, fat wood is a, is a sort of pine wood where the sap in the tree has collected and concentrated and crystallized, usually at the bottom in the stump or in the roots. Unfortunately, the last time I used this, I drop my flint striker on the ground and you see it's missing one of the curls. It still works excellent. I, do, I would just have to fix this. I would just have to reforge it and twist it again. But there's enough material there to do and I just have to re-harden it. There's a wasp trying to get me here. I just have to re-harden it and rework it, which I may do someday. Or I just make me a brand new one. This one's still fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I can clean that with a file. I should have annealed the handle part some more but uh, it's always a 50-50 chance with these breaking. If you get them too soft, they won't spark. You get them too hard, they'll spark real nice, but if I just drop this on the anvil, it'll break like glass. Or if I drop it on the gravel here, it might even just break in four pieces. So that's, there's, a, there's a down draw to the so advantage I got my of having it. dry grass right here. What I'm going to do is going to get what you call a bird's nest. So you're going to circle this up a little bit and wrap it around. When I get my piece of charred cloth ready, I'll put it in here and shut this down and start to blow on it until it ignites. Then I'm going to set it down in the fire and you can then also, when this starts to glow, put a piece of put a piece of uh, which is, tree sap down in there to keep that from going out. You'll have a good fire source to put that in there and then I'll turn the forge blower and then I'll have some of these wooden sticks burning and What's then important I'll have is you find the sharp fire. edge and you don't want to hit too hard you just want to give it the quickness is really the trick uh, force isn't a factor here you just need to be quick fast enough for the flint to actually shave microscopic filings off of the striker and that's what that spark is is uh, actual metal burning in the oxygen in the air you want them to land on the charred cloth and start to burn the charred cloth and from there you get your chemical reaction of fire with the oxygen and the air from this burning. So we're going to try this. I'm 
reaching around the camera here so I have a a good angle here. I'm going to try to do this over the camera. See if I can do this on the first strike. That'd be awesome. Ready? Mm. It's not a very good corner of the flint. I'm getting a lot of sparks in the wrong direction. So I'm going to turn my charred cloth and use another corner of this flint. Oh, it's, it's glowing. I got it. You can see it. It has actually worked. I haven't, it's the light outside. It's too, it's too dark, but you can actually see. I don't know if the camera, I just touched it and burned my thumb. So let's get this in the fire. Actually did work fairly easily. I didn't think so at first. So we're going to get this down in here. I'm going to use the pedal on the forge to turn the bellows to blow air through the grass to get this to ignite. There we go. There's our fire. Alright, got the forge fired up and I got my workpiece in there and got a set of hinges for a chest that I'm building. This is the last piece of the hinges, then I have to build the hasp. Now I can get to making the actual wooden part nice and red hot. I'm going to move over to the vise real quick. Adjust my over here on the anvil. Check it out. That looks pretty good. Straighten out all the bends. Side some. I think that looks pretty good. So, oh, got that perfect hot. Now we're just going to bring this over to the anvil. Make sure this is nice and straight. Right around here. Make sure that none of this is all off. Make sure that that is straight. And looking good. All right. Should make a nice 90 degrees like there. That's going to be the hasp. We're going to put the, the actual lock part right there. That's the piece I'm going to make next. I've got the hatches, hasps made. I'm going to clean them up a little bit here with the, uh, with the flap wheel. They're going to look really, really good. Here I'm making sure that all the corners aren't sharp. And they're turning out pretty nice. Actually, I really like them. I'm going to clean up the corners. And I'm going to take my power tool here. I have a power grinder that I just got, which is pretty cool. And I'm going to clean up, I'm going to polish these up with the, with the wheel so that these slide really nicely. And it takes out all the, the high spots as well make them look a lot nicer and they, so they function really nice. Real nice heavy duty hasps. It's going to be a little bit larger box too so and since uh, it's going to be a box for Bjorn anybody Bjorn and I want it to be kind of heavy duty because it's going to be a little bit larger it's going to be fun shipping it <laughs> but that's the next challenge so I'm going to do this and then we'll get back with you guys Got the hinges all cleaned up and now I'm making the lock plate with the hasp. It's going to go right here where the where you put the lock actually to put the the actual hasp across. So I'm going to drill these two holes. This is actually the piece that's going to come down and and where that's going to go over.
I'm going to poke holes in it at home, clean up the hinges some more at the house with some sandpaper. Time to clean up and it's about time to go home for today. This was my goal for the weekend and I've achieved it so it's time to stop. That's it YouTube and uh, I'll see you guys soon. As I carry on with this project I have a couple of other things I wanted to show you this week. I'd have to find some time after work to come in here and actually do that so I hope that's going to be possible. Lock everything up and all that good stuff.